Hi guys, welcome back to the garden. How are you? How are you? How are you? I'm Naomi, your newbie gardener here, garden in zone 6B, St. Louis, Missouri. And I started the video with you looking at the coleus. I don't know if you remember the coleus from our late May tour. So these have been planted now in the pot for about a month. And look at how they've grown, right? Look at this. I love coleus, guys. Can't go wrong with coleus, right? Awesome for shady areas. Um, look right here. The only thing you have to do in terms of maintenance of outside of watering is when you see them start forming these little seed heads, you go on in here and you just nip that top off just like that. And that's going to encourage the plant to get fuller and more beautiful for you. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all I have to do for maintenance. All right. So this video is not, it is not about coleus. Today I want to show you something that I got from the nursery. Um, that I had to rescue. All right, let me take you to them. Look at these guys. I got some bobo hydrangeas. I was walking very fast, wasn't I? I hope I didn't make you dizzy. I've got some, uh, no, not bobo, incredible, incredible hydrangeas. And these incredible hydrangeas look so stressed. OMG. They look so sad. Right? So sad. How many? Oh my goodness. They're not looking very healthy. And I don't know why, as gardeners, well, why I do this is that you see a plant really stressed on a lot and you think it's your responsibility to take it home and rescue it, right? You're like, I gotta rescue you. Well, we did it again. We, we're, we're going to try to rescue this, these poor little bobos. Now, I keep saying bobos. Why do I keep doing that? These are the incredible hydrangeas. These poor little incredible hydrangeas. All right. Now this one is the healthiest looking of them all. Has more stems than the other two. There are three of them here. All right. They're in the little nursery pots. They are thirsty and burnt, as you can see by their panicles. See how dry it is. So they've not been watered well. Look at the leaves. Ooh, not very, not very nice, right? Not very beautiful at the moment. But we are going to put some love on these guys, right? We are going to put some love on them. I'm going to take them out. First thing, we're going to take them out of these nursery pots. I'm going to transplant them into larger pots. I'm not going to put them in the ground. Uh, because, well, let me think. Yeah, because I don't think I have a space in the ground for them at the moment, but that's all right. We're going to upsize them by putting them in larger pots. And I'll try to find the perfect area in the garden for those pots to rest. And then we are just going to put some love on them throughout the rest of the season. And then hopefully they are going to bounce back beautifully for us and we'll have some beautiful hydrangeas next year. Okay? Some beautiful hydrangeas that we have absolutely no space for. But we've got them anyway. I did that. Okay, I've taken you into my messy garage. This is what these containers I picked up from Home Depot, right? I have two of them, so I'm going to have to run back to the store to get another. But this is what I'm thinking of that we're going to use to plant the bobos in. Oh, I said, mercy, mercy me. Guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, Naomi. Okay, this is what we'll be using to plant the incredible hydrangeas in. All right, I do not know why Bobo is on my mind. All right, I just cannot stop thinking about her for some strange reason. Every time I go to say hi, stranger, I say Bobo. All right. Okay, so these are the, this is a container that I have. I've got two of them sitting here. One potato, two potato. We're going to run over to Home Depot. I'm going to try to pick up another because they are three. Um, so that we have the three matching containers that for some reason it just has to match, right? Um, if it doesn't, that's fine. But I think I can actually find these. So I'm going to go back and pick up another. And then from there, it's just about mixing our soil. I have some extra soil sitting here in the garage, right? I've got the garden soil and the Scott's top soil. And I do have peat moss because I bought a whole big bag of it. So I've got lots of peat moss and cow manure. So we're going to mix that soil up like we normally do. And we're going to get those hydrangeas potted up.
one's heavy. First time using this. Decided to give it a try. Go. Woo, heavy. All right, guys, I am back. Okay, so we went to Home Depot. We got the extra container that we needed, and now it's time to plant. I just decided to give you guys a sneak peek at the rose walk. Look at the roses. Munstead Wood has started his second flush. So has Olivia. Vanessa Bell is still waiting. She's still not ready yet, but it's looking good, right, guys? Yeah, it's looking good. Gardening is hard work. Look at these arborvitaes. I'm wondering if I should be worried. Their tips are starting to turn brown. Oh no. Let me come in closer so you can see. Oh, don't look at my nails. I need to get my nails done. Look at this. Yeah, they're turning light and then they're getting a little brown on the edges. I'm like, no, no, no. And it's actually all over the plant. So I'm hoping that these guys are going to settle in well for us right they've been in now uh, in the containers for a week okay so it could just be a little bit of transplant shock getting used to the new environment but I'm hoping that they are going to settle in and pull through nicely for me and let's get back to what we're supposed to be doing which is the hydrangeas all right they look so much more beautiful on camera than they do in person okay here are the containers one two three We've got the soil laid out, and I'm going to show you where I'm thinking of putting them right now. Actually, let me put the camera on the stand so it won't be so shaky. Hold on. Okay, so those of you who have follow, who are following my videos knows that I have been eyeing this spot for a bit, right? I have been eyeing this spot in front of the green giant arborvitaes. Okay, these tall, beautiful trees. Okay, absolutely gorgeous. They are absolutely gorgeous. Still going up. Whoa, the camera doesn't go that far. Look at this. Beautiful trees, right? This is where I'm thinking of placing the containers. All right. Let me place them so that you can see. But my thoughts are that I want to put a bed in front of this tree. And I want to do it where it's sort of a... Um, I want to use a sheet mulching method because I don't want to go down. I don't want to remove chaff. Do you see all of this grass? The work and the effort to remove all of that would be a little bit too much for me now, especially in the heat, right? So I'm thinking do sheet mulching and that will help me to come up instead of having to go down. And also, um, it will be useful because this tree, and as old and as, um, and it's actually one, two, three, four trees, but as old and as healthy as they are, I'm thinking they have roots running everywhere, right? They probably have roots running all the way here. And, the, and you've seen my shadow. That's not cute. Hold on. Let's see if I can change my position so you don't see my shadow as much. But you see what we're looking at. How's that? So you're still seeing a little bit of my shadow, but not that much. Right. I'm doing this in the evening because it is way too hot during the days. Way too hot. Right? And when I'm transplanting anything during the summer, I feel a little better doing it um, in the evenings because I think I give the plant that 12 or so hours of cooler temperatures before the sun hits again the next day. Um, I don't know if it helps. I just think that it's, it's better for the plants. I don't feel as stressed and they tend not to be as stressed, right? Okay, so back to what we were talking about. This tree has a lot of roots running just everywhere. So sheet mulching would work because I'm going to go up instead of down. And I'm also going to do a lots of containers in the area so that I'm not disturbing and running into roots just all over the place. Let me place the containers and then take a look and tell me if you think you like them where we're going to put them. And then if we're happy with that placement, we are going to go ahead and plant up these hydrangeas. All right.
Let's see. Let's see. What do you guys think? You're seeing, you're seeing the whole thing. What do you think? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, we may have to sleep on this one. But before we sleep on this one, hello. Look who's saying hello to you. <gasps> who is this? Yes. Lady of Charlotte, guys. Woo! Lady of Charlotte, looking beautiful as always. Now, you know how, let's see, Munstead Wood, um, Vanessa Bell, Olivia Rose Austin, all those roses, they did their first flush, they did their thing, and then they took a break, right? You got maybe one or two sporadic blooms, and that was it. Lady of Charlotte simply will not stop flowering. Oh, my, my. I love her so much. Isn't she beautiful? Look, all these spent blooms need to be deadheaded again, and she just won't stop. Awesome rose. Awesome, awesome, awesome rose. These long canes, I, I just, I'm waiting for her flowers to bloom, because at the tip, she has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight buds, eight flowers. I cannot sacrifice those, right? I have to wait for them to bloom, and then I'll go ahead and cut back. But wow, isn't she beautiful? Look at that. Loving her. All right, so back to what we're supposed to be doing. Garden soil. I do not know much about it. It was uh, I picked it up at Home Depot, um, so I, I have it turned upside down. Of course, you can't read it. There you go. Why is that Kellogg Garden Organic Soil for flowers and vegetables? Vegetables. All right, so we're going to give it a try. Figure it can't be that bad, right? Because I normally use the Scotts Top Soil, so I'm thinking anything mixed in should be okay. And it is a heavy bag. This bag cost eight dollars, about nine dollars at taxes. Uh, it's two cubic feet. I don't know how good it is. Oh my gosh, but it is heavy. Woo! Alright. Getting everything out so that I can pour it all back in there outside of the bags. Alright, this is a Matthew's bag of topsoil I've had sitting in the wheel bar for a couple of days. I guess I have you on record. Yeah, you guys are seeing it. Alright, I'm just putting in all of my, my semi used bags. Oh, my God. Guys, this garden soil looks serious, and I think we're just going to go ahead and pour it all in here. Oh, hopefully the plants will like it. If they don't, so oh there. Lifted a heavy bag twice. Let me tell you, gardening is a workout. Anyone tells you it's not a workout? Wow, it feels nice and light, guys. Can you see it? Let me pull you in a little bit closer. Once I have the bag opened, <laughs> all right, the mix itself feels really light, really nice. So, interesting. Looks like it has a lot of organic matter in it already. And if you see those wood chippy looking things, can you see it? Okay, interesting. Let me know if any of you are using this one, or have used it. Uh, right, we're going to pour this whole thing out. Oh, Lord. That 
actually like the texture of it. I like the texture of that. Let me make sure I'm not mixing too much. I have two, three containers. Uh, something tells me I might be mixing up a little bit too much. Uh, I'm going to go with a little over half the bag. And something tells me that I won't need all of this. Alright, that was the garden soil. I would have over half a bag of the garden soil. It looks good. Something I'd play in. For half a bag of the garden soil, I'm going to add another quarter bag of the cow manure. This big clunk of clay that came out of there. Cow manure. Ugh. Okay. I'll throw this away. Keep moss in. Here. Moss, very dusty. And some water. They look good in the container. Now you're looking at the one that came as the healthiest of the lot. This one has way more stems, okay? a fuller, healthier plant. Okay. Coming down here, this is number two. Uh, pull back so you can see her. There she is. All right. And this one actually had two plants in the same pot and I left them as is. I did not separate them. Um, I think she needs that look of fullness. If I separate it, then I just have two stems. All right. And number three, right here. Hey, they look kind of cute elevated in the pots. Let me pull you back so that you can see. All right, so we are all done and this is what the containers are looking like. I actually like these containers now. They're actually kind of cute. Yeah, I got these from Home Depot. They're like $25, I think, for the container. All right. And they're, they, they are huge, 24 inches. So they have held a lot of soil. So the hydrangeas should be happy in the space for a while. 
right? Now, these are the incredible hydrangeas. They do grow four to five feet tall and wide. I'm thinking the container is going to limit their size a bit. Oh, look at this, guys. Look, 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 look. Look at our little friend coming to say good morning. Do you see him? Mm-hmm. He's coming for breakfast, or he's already had breakfast. Look at him. Let me get you in a little bit closer. Do you see, our little friend? My kids have officially adopted the bunnies, so I can no longer make serious attempts to get them out of the garden. All right, and I'm giving in. I'm going to have to go ahead and do, what's that thing? I'm going to have to do mesh. I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to put mesh around most of my baby roses. It uh, probably won't be the most attractive look, but at least I'll have, the roses will be able to grow. All right, so, okay, back to what we're doing here. Not going to focus on the bunny. All right, so this is, this is the look, guys, and I like the look. I think I'm going to like a plant in around this tree, so we are going to go ahead and we are going to make this an official bed. I'm going to sit down and do some sketches, think about it, and see what I want to put there. I'm picturing light purples in between the bobos. Oh, I said bobos again. I light purples in between the hydrangeas. Right? I'm thinking like purples, I'm thinking maybe pinks, maybe reds. It's going to be interesting landscape in this space because the the um, land itself slopes. It starts higher on this side and then it slopes down and then comes to um, settle in right here at the last container. So it's going to be really interesting figuring out how to lay the bed out so that it looks um, like a nice cohesive sort of a, um unsloped area. But all right, so... I'll not get into that. I will go ahead and end this video here because you guys are absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for having uh, joined me in the garden for yet another video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm. Bye.